All right, aspiring authors. As we barrel very quickly toward the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024, I have a question for you. What stage of the author journey are you in? I know, I know you're probably thinking, well, how do you define stages of the author journey, right? It's going to depend on that and everybody probably defines them differently. Well, that's exactly what I want to talk about today because I'm going to give you the different stages on the fiction author success timeline. That's what I've called it. And it's really important for you to know what you are so that you can set goals for 2024 and what you want to get done with your writing. So we're going to talk about that in great detail and what 2024 could look like for you if you just set the right goals. Okay, stay tuned. Hi there, aspiring fiction author. Welcome to Fiction Author Business School. Do you want to write your stories with ease and confidence? Do you find yourself Googling how to write a fiction book or how to write a character arc? Do you want to create a fiction empire, but you can't even finish the story you're currently working on and you find yourself doubting it will even be good enough? Hi, I'm Liesl. I too have been writing stories since I was just a kid. I wanted to do something about my fiction writing dreams, but got information overload every time I looked for writing help because there's just so much out there on the internet. I wanted confidence that I wouldn't disappoint my readers and a plan to publish regularly. I knew the foundation of any author career, including the marketing aspect, is a stellar and well-written story, but I didn't know how to be sure that my story was solid. I went on a journey to figure out what really makes readers tick and how to incorporate those addictive elements into my story. In this podcast, you'll find specific tactical fiction writing tips, solutions to writing more words more efficiently, and secrets to mastering your author mindset. So put on your fuzzy slippers, grab a notebook and pen and some chocolate, and let's write some fiction. Okay, so like I said in the introduction, we are fast coming toward the end of the year, as in, I cannot believe Thanksgiving is already here and Christmas, of course, is right around the corner. But that just means that it's time for us to evaluate how we've done this year in terms of writing and how we want to do next year. Now, part of the reason I'm doing this is that I'm getting a lot of people telling me that they want help with marketing. I've always been a little bit reluctant to give people marketing help, but As I said, I'm putting together a new program in the new year, and the way that I'm I'm structuring it is going to be a little bit different than I have before. Um, I'll give you more information about that as it gets closer, but here's, here's the thing. Marketing truly is a big part of succeeding as a fiction author, right? I mean, I've talked about different pillars of things before and different identities you can take on as an author, but when it comes to succeeding all around and the things that you have to do and do well if you want to build a business from your fiction includes the actual writing, of course, which is both getting the words down physically onto the page and telling a good story, but then there's also a mindset and the third prong, if you will, is marketing. I I totally get that. The only problem is that most people jump into marketing in the first five minutes after they finish their book. And while that's not at all a bad thing, in fact, you should be thinking about marketing at every stage of the author journey, the type of marketing people want to do, they tend to do it too quickly. And that's why I have always kind of been reluctant to do marketing. If you try to jump into throwing money at something before you have a really stellar product, you're going to end up shooting yourself in the foot. And obviously we don't want that. But I will say that because so many people are asking me for it, I will be open to doing marketing kinds of things in the future, whether that be coaching you through marketing or putting together marketing programs or whatever the case may be. But again, that's kind of something that we're going to look at more in 2024. For today, it's important for you to know where you're at in the author journey and specifically what you need to do to get to the next phase, right? So if you want to do anything, you need to be able to recognize where you're at and, you know, the steps you need to take to progress. So with the help of my uh, podcasting buddy, Adam Shibley, I have created a fiction author success timeline, and I've identified four possible stages that you might be in. So I'm going to go through these stages and what you need to do to progress from one stage to another so that you can figure out where you're at right now and have some idea of what you might need to do to move forward. Okay, so the point is that if you're just starting to write your first manuscript, obviously you're not going to be interested in learning CPC ads yet because you've got quite a few steps in between before you're going to be able to get any sort of advantage out of running CPC ads, right? Okay, so with that said, let's just dive in to the four stages of the fiction author success timeline. 
The first phase is what I've called the fiction fear zone. Basically, that's when you're first, you know, even considering writing fiction and that you might be able to sell it commercially, okay? Some of the symptoms of being in this phase are that you have fear that making money on fiction is not realistic, that you're not going to be able to do it, that people are going to laugh at you for even trying. You really have no confidence in your writing abilities and no confidence in your storytelling abilities. Those are two different things, by the way. Um, You definitely cannot write the desired number of words at will, meaning If you want to sit down and write 5,000 words, you cannot do that. You want to do that. You have the desire to do that, but it just doesn't happen at all. You sit down, you write 200 words, and then you are done, and you can't figure out how to get to the point (laughs) where you can write as many words as you want at will, right? Um, Typically, in this phase, you are afraid to let others see see your work. Even when you do write something, it's hard to show it to anybody. You have somewhere between zero and two books published. I would say most people have zero books published at this stage, but it's possible to remain in this stage even if you have a book or two under your belt. And in terms of marketing, you have zero or a very, very tiny email list, okay? I would venture to guess that while you might have a symptom or two of this phase, most people listening to this podcast have probably progressed beyond stage one. Um, The reason being that most people in this phase wouldn't reach out uh, naturally and try to find help with this sort of thing. Usually, you know, once you're doing that, you've made some hard and fast decisions about your writing. So, I mean, I could be wrong about that. If that's you, great. Just know what phase you're in. That's the most important thing. And it doesn't matter which phase you're in. There's, There's no shame in only being still in phase one. It just means that you're starting out on the journey, and that's a beautiful thing. But just recognize where you're at. Um, In order to get out of this phase, there's a few things that you need to do before you can progress onto phase two. One of them is to determine and commit to your fiction writing goals. By determine, I mean, what is it that you want to get out of your writing? Are you looking to be a lifelong career author and live off your fiction royalties? Or do you just have one book in you that you want to get written and that'll be it for you? Or is it somewhere in between? You want to do it part time as kind of a hobby and you wouldn't mind making some money on it. I mean, you need to know how this is going to serve you and what you want to do with this. So determine what that's going to be and then commit to getting your fiction written and to achieving those goals, right? The second thing you need to do is rewire your brain for focus, drive, and belief in your own abilities. And yes, I did say rewire your brain. This is where meditation comes into play. Um, It's going to be really hard to succeed if you continue having these doubts about your own abilities and if you have a scarcity or lack mindset when it comes to your writing. So that's something that you really need to do if you want to uh, succeed at being a fiction author, right? Number three is determine the desired number of words per writing session that you want, whether that be 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 200, you know, whatever it may be. And hone your skills until you can write that many words per session, no problem. Because again, if you want to be successful, you need to be able to sit down and get those words written on the page. You can come up with the most amazing, life-changing story in the history of fiction writing, but if you can't get it written, it's not going to make much difference to people, right? Because they can't read it. Um, So you need to figure out how to write the desired number of words in any given writing session. Okay, number four, you need to learn the basics of how the fiction writing and publishing industry currently works. Really, you do need to know the ins and outs of it um, in order to navigate it, in order to make it work in your favor, and to not be completely, you know, overwhelmed in the abyss of people trying to publish things on Amazon. So it's just basic knowledge you need to have of the industry. And number five, you need to get your email list set up and at least ready to grow. The email list is going to be your most important marketing asset, and that's something that you need to start early on, okay? So once you've done all of those things, once again, I'll recap, determine and commit to your fiction writing goals, rewire your brain for focus drive and belief in your own abilities, determine the number of words you want to write per session and get to the point where you can write them without too much problem. Um, learn the basics of the fiction writing and publishing industry, and then get your email list set up. Once you've done those things, you can safely say that you've progressed to phase two. So phase two, I call the fiction block zone. And I would, this is just my guess, I would think that most people listening to this podcast are probably in this zone, okay? The, The symptoms of the fiction block zone are these. You struggle to finish your books, okay? Um, You constantly have a fear that your writing may not be good enough, epic enough, it may not resonate with readers enough. You fear you won't be successful because of those things, and therefore you get frustrated, you get blocked, 
you know, have a lot of indecision about your story. Um, so you struggle with either the beginning or the ending or filling in the soggy, saggy middle, something like that. <laughs> yes, I totally did just say soggy middle. Um, <laughs> you also struggle with how to talk about your book to readers. You know, we don't really know what to say or how to describe it. Sure, you can describe the plot, but is that really working uh, as a way to get readers excited about your book? You know, is it working as a, a marketing tactic? How do you talk about your book in a way that will make readers want to buy it? That sort of thing. Um, you're taking four months or longer to finish a manuscript. That's slowing you down, I promise. Um, you have either zero sales or very few sales on the books that you have published. So again, maybe you have a couple of books published, but you know, you've got, uh, you mostly launched to crickets and you know, you might have a few sales here and there, but nothing very substantial. All right. So if all, most of those, any of those, uh, describe you, then you are in phase number two, which is the fiction block zone. Here is the checklist of things that you need to do in order to move out of this zone and progress to zone number three. Uh, if you haven't figured it out, each zone that you progress toward is getting you closer to success, okay? So like I said, it's not bad to be in any of these zones, it's just part of the journey, but you also need to know where you're at and how to progress because the further along you go in the zone, zone two, three, four, the more success you're gonna find with your fiction writing, okay? So the checklist to get out of phase two is you need to start using an annual fiction projects calendar. And I may or may not create one of these for you guys in the new year, but even if it's not something I create for you, you need to be planning your fiction projects because if you want to be successful at this, you need to treat it like a business. So you need to know exactly what you're going to be writing and when and have a timeline and that sort of thing. You need to be very intentional about planning your fiction projects. Okay, um, you need to be able to plan your stories and manuscripts in a way that you know will resonate with readers. So this is where my programs will come into play. I'm going to be putting out my new program in the new year that will help you to do this. And the reason that this is important for your fiction writing success is that you need to be able to write a book that you have confidence in and that you know will resonate with readers and that you know has the potential to be a bestseller, right? You need to have that confidence or it's going to be really, really hard to be successful as a fiction writer. So you need to have some sort of system in place. When we talk about writing processes, we usually talk about how we go about getting our words written. Like, um, do we sit at our keyboard? Do we dictate? Do we light candles for ambiance? You know, what is our, or, you know, do we edit as we go? Or do we write the whole first rough draft and then edit afterward? You know, these are the kinds of things we mean when we talk about a writing process. But I would submit that we need a process for actually getting the story created, as in, in our minds, we need a process for um, the story structure and how we are going to write it that we can have confidence in. And the sad thing is most writers lack that. And so it's really difficult for them to even get the first book written, much less have confidence that it's going to do well with readers, okay? So this is another thing that you need to do to get out of that fiction block zone. You will stop having story indecision. You will stop being blocked as to various parts of your story if you just have a step-by-step -step process for how to plan your story. And uh, like I said, my program will be coming out soon that will help you do that. Um, the next thing you need to do is to create a story specific lead magnet for email growth. Most of you guys know what this is, but it's just something free that you can give your readers in exchange for their email address. Um, it can be a full novel. It can be a short story. Once you have started going, I, I know most people don't want to stop and write an entire book that they're going to give away for free. But at this point, once you have you know, your processes kind of dialed in, you know how to plan a story and you've, you know, if in phase one, you really did get to a point where you couldn't write as many words as you desire in a single writing session, then this really shouldn't be too hard to do. And I'm a big fan of doing novellas for lead magnets. They're not quite as long as full novels and you can actually churn them out pretty quickly if you have your processes dialed in, right? So whatever it is you're going to be using, you can use something much smaller and easier to put together, especially at first, but create a story specific lead magnet because that is what's going to grow your email list. And as I said, the email list is going to be your most important marketing asset. So if you want to start marketing early, the best way you can start marketing early is by growing your email list and you do need a lead magnet to do that. Okay. So that's the next thing you need to do. I would also start in this phase as you're trying to get out of it using small, low risk, affordable ads, which means not CPC ads, but things like newsletter, 
uh, mailing list, which is where you pay one flat fee and someone else sends your book out to their mailing list, things like that. Um, you can also, if you're wide, use in-house promotions on various platforms. Um, you know, the, the promos that Kobo does or Nook Press does for Barnes and Noble, things like that. And these are small and low risk and affordable. And so you don't have to worry about losing tons of money. You don't have to worry too much about read through yet. It's just using a small budget to move some books and to get some of them out to your readers. And it also gets you used to running ads for your books. Honestly, guys, there's a big part of that. That's a mindset thing. You need to get used to putting out some money in order to get your book in front of readers. And this is a way to do it that is small. That's not going to kill your pocketbook. Um, so that is something you should start doing. Um, at this point, I would start creating specific and somewhat extensive marketing and launch plans. Okay, you need to, again, just like using um, some sort of calendar to plan your fiction projects, you need to have a marketing plan for your book, you need to have a launch plan, and you need, just need to be really intentional about it. It's not even so much that your launch or your marketing needs to be super, super lucrative right now, but you need to start thinking about it and you need to start being intentional about it because by the time you have a bigger backlist, you'll already have these habits and these processes in place, okay? Um, at this point, I would also start building out your story's universe. Now, that's going to depend on what kind of story you're writing. But if you're writing um, a full series and you need a universe, I would really start building that out and thinking about how you can bring your readers into that. Um, I, I got to say, guys, so it's only been maybe two weeks now, I two weeks ago that I did a an episode on how to plan character arcs and events over an entire series rather than just a single book. And wow, you guys really liked that episode. That episode did way more downloads in just a week than most of my episodes do. So clearly a lot of you are thinking about this. A lot of you are wanting to plan larger arcs over a series. And that's a good thing. That's how you make a lot of money doing this. Um, so at this point, if even if you've only written one book in the series, this is where you really need to start building out your universe and figuring out how you can use it um, to bring readers in and how to market your book with it, okay? Um, the other thing you need to do, or well, I guess this is the checklist, uh, you at this point should have two to five books published and you're probably going to be publishing those while you're in phase two. But once you've got about five books published and if you've hit all these other checkpoints, that's when you would probably be safe to say that you've moved on to phase three. Um, and finally, I would, you know, near the end of this phase, I would start using Amazon ads at a very low level, just learning them in general, but not spending too much money on them. And I would like to see your email list at a thousand or more. Okay. Um, you might think that that's a lot. <laughs> I remember when I first, you know, got into fiction and was in phase one, I couldn't imagine having a thousand people on my email list. It just seemed like so many. And how do you do that? But it's not as hard as you think it is. And a thousand is actually considered a relatively small email list for a fiction writer. So uh, let's recap, recap that. So for phase two of the fiction block zone, this is where you're struggling to finish your books. You have a fear that your writing is not good enough and that you won't be successful because it's not good enough. You're constantly blocked as to your story, having a lot of story indecision. You struggle with how to talk about your books to readers. You're taking four months or longer to finish a manuscript. You have zero or very few sales on any books you may have already published. And you have a very, very small email list growth. Like it's just not growing very quickly, right? So the checklist for moving past this phase is that you need to start using an annual projects calendar and just being very, very intentional about planning your fiction uh, projects. You need to plan your stories and manuscripts with some kind of system that will allow you to be confident that your story is going to resonate with readers. Uh, you need to create a story specific lead magnet for email growth. And once you have that lead magnet, it's really not too hard to grow to a thousand followers. So that's why those things kind of go hand in hand. You need to start using small, low risk, affordable ads like newsletter ads and, um, create a specific and extensive marketing and launch plan so that you have that in place for when you're, you know, moving forward with your, any books that you might be writing. Um, start building out your story's universe and brainstorming how you can use it to market. You want to get two to five books published before you move out of this phase and begin using Amazon ads on a low level and you need to get your email list to at least a thousand or more. 
Once you have checked all of those things off, then I would say that you are in phase three, which is the fiction traction zone. This is where you're going to finally start to see things click, right? The first two zones, there's a lot of building going on, but not a ton of traction. And we want to get you to the point where you're seeing traction. Unfortunately, you have to go through the first two phases before you get to the third. As much as people want to skip over it, you got to do the work before you can get here, right? So symptoms of being in the fiction traction zone. You understand and are seeing traction with your Amazon ads and you're ready to scale. Uh, you're making more regular sales, maybe still on a low level, but you are making them and you're ready for more. Um, you might be collaborating regularly with other authors and you're scaling the ads you do have and branching out to different kinds of ads, right? So the checklist before moving out of this zone is that your book production needs to be on a steady roll. It needs to be almost second nature at this point. You know how long it's going to take you to get a book written. You know what the processes are and you can plan how many projects you're going to do in a single year or a single quarter or however it is you plan. You, you know that number is, what that number is with confidence because you have all your processes in place. Um, your mindset is confident. It's like an onward and upward mindset because you've gotten past all of your blocks. You have full, a full production and marketing plan with all your systems in place. At this point, I would love to see everyone hire a VA if it's within their bu budget because you get, you're getting to a point where you can hand off some of the smaller tasks so that you can focus on your writing. Uh, your email list should be 5,000 or more, and you should have five to 10 books published by the end of this phase, okay? Once you get to this phase, like I said, things will start to click and things will start to roll forward a little bit more easily, you might say. Okay, and then you get to phase four. Phase four is the fiction thrive zone. <laughs> um, in this phase, you regularly make three to 5K or more per month in royalties. Now guys, if you can't even imagine doing that, understand there are literally dozens, if not hundreds of authors doing this right now, okay? Not everybody is a six-figure author, but that doesn't mean you can't make a good living even if you're not a six-figure author and you can easily become a six-figure author if that's what you want. Um, you need to have an engaged email list of 10K readers or more. You can predict how many books you'll sell in a launch and how many per month on each platform. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get some pushback and say even really seasoned authors do not know how many they're going to sell in a launch. There's some truth to that. It's going to depend on the season. It's going to depend on a lot of things. But you'll at least have some idea of what to expect because you've already done some launches and you do know what your numbers are and you do know, you know, basically how many um, readers from your email list will probably buy your book. You know, of course, you're not going to be able to probably predict it down to I'm going to sell 1,948. But no, I mean, of course not. But you'll have a pretty good idea. Um, and the biggest thing, symptom of this phase is a good thing. It's that you will have confidence that you'll be able to make money doing this for the rest of your life because you now know how to do it. Even if algorithms change, even if Amazon pulls a fast one on us that we have to kind of pivot and figure out, which happens pretty regularly, <laughs> you still know how to do this. You still know how to tell a great story now. You know how to publish it. You know how to market it. You know how to um, create a list of readers who will want your book, right? So you can have confidence that this is something you can continue to do, even if technology changes, even if the way in which we present our books to our reader changes, okay? So the checklist for this one is to not forget to always serve your readers through genre expectations, um, you know, the human template, how humans absorb story, universal fantasy, and just writing amazing stories. You're going to keep doing what's working. And as you have the ability, you're going to branch out to higher level, more creative marketing practices. This can be different kinds of ads. This can be scaling up those ads. This can be hiring people to help you. This could be like maybe a Kickstarter, the kind of things that you're not going to do until you're very confident in not only your writing and your book, but also your audience, right? Um, and then the other thing is you're just going to maintain your work-life balance, which is very important. Some of this, you know, in the early phases, you might be needing to hustle a little bit. And I'm not a huge fan of hustle, honestly, but, you know, some of us have to work a day job. And then if we want to do our writing, we have to do that on the side. And so we're not all able to just jump into full-time writing all the time. But when you get to the point where you can, at that point, you need to make sure that you're maintaining your work-life balance so that you're not getting overwhelmed and so that you're putting the things first that are the most important, right? So 
Um, I'm not going to recap all of that, but I will just go through the phases one more time. There is the fiction fear zone, which is phase one when you're just starting out. There's the fiction block zone, which I think probably a good number of you guys are in. There's the fiction traction zone, which is where you really start to have things click. And then there's the fiction thrive zone, which is kind of where we all want to be and are aspiring to be, but it takes a little while to get there. All right, so... I would encourage you to figure out what phase you're in. Um, I am going to create a PDF that that lists all of these phases and their checklists. Um, There won't be an email required or anything. It'll just be a free download so that you can look at it and decide which phase you're in. And again, I think that's important as we you know, get to the point where we're going to close out this year and go into the next year because you need to know where you're at and what you need to do to move forward. And of course, I will be here to help you with that if you want the help. Okay. Um, So as we head into Thanksgiving, I'm going to do another shorty episode um, in a couple of days about gratitude. But I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday and that you can move forward with your writing in a way that serves you and that makes you happy and lights you up. Okay. I also want to say that I'm very grateful for all of you who show up every week to listen to me ramble on about writing and geek out about it. Um, But I do appreciate you. And, you know, we're all on this journey together. We all have a love of fiction writing. And that's why we're here. So um, take a look at the fiction author success timeline and determine how it can serve you and how you can use it to build your fiction career, especially as we head into 2024. Okay, everyone have a wonderful week of writing. And I will be back same time, same place next week. Bye. Thanks so much for listening today. Before you go, would you be willing to do me a solid? If you found any value at all in this episode today, would you be willing to share it with other authors just like you in the hopes that they might find some value in it as well? Happy story crafting this week. Remember, only you can bring the world the unique story that you are trying to tell. Only you can succeed in your own unique way in getting it out of your mind and your heart and into a medium where it can reach thousands if not millions of salivating readers. You don't have to worry about failure because there is always a market for awesome.